Hello and welcome to Clean and Healthy New York's webinar on green purchasing in New York State. Um, my name is Greg Kemp Cohen. I'm the Outreach Coordinator at Clean and Healthy New York and I've been talking to purchasing officers across New York State for the last year or so about PFAS, single-use foodware, safer alternatives, um, and using New York State's green purchasing portal. So a little bit about Clean and Healthy New York. Um, we were founded in 2006, and our mission is promoting safer chemicals, a sustainable economy, and a healthier world. Uh, we do that through four major outlets. So we do that through policy advocacy. Uh, what that means is we often talk to legislators about bills that exist or bills that we think should be introduced, um, largely oriented around getting toxic chemicals out of consumer products, but it's not limited to that. Um, we also do market campaigns, so we will collaborate with um, or otherwise interact with um, companies both in New York State and nationally uh, to try to get them up to speed on um, better policies for chemicals in their products. Um, we also do that through education, through things like this. Um, Oftentimes we'll talk to child care providers, um, you know, warehouse workers, nurses um, about best practices and the best chemicals that they can use in their workplaces. Um, and we also do that through collaboration, um, both within New York State with the Just Green Partnership um, and uh, across the United States, um, because the laws that exist in one state um, could very well affect the laws that exist elsewhere. While I'm talking about PFAS and foodware and green purchasing in New York State, some of the things that I'd like you to be thinking about are um, how is most food service ware handled in your facilities? What do you use? And how do you dispose of it? Um, and I think as a, an important secondary question to that is, is disposal factored into your budget? Um, when you're thinking about foodware, or do you consider that a separate expense? And I mention that because the way we think about cost is often incomplete. If you see a sleeve of polystyrene cups, for instance, and that's $3, and then you see one ceramic mug, and that's 5 in a vacuum, yeah, the polystyrene cups are clearly the cheaper option. Um, and it's important you don't fall into that trap because there are so many hidden costs there. Um, polystyrene has to be disposed of somehow, um, so who's paying for that? You have to repurchase it over and over, you need to uh, have someone who does that repurchasing. Um, it's more likely to make your employees sick, um, which means less productivity. These considerations don't all go one way, right? Uh, a ceramic mug has to be washed, you need to purchase soap, and so on. Um, but when you think about cost, I think it's important to think about it holistically um, rather than just that sticker price. So with that in mind, I'm going to talk about what PFAS is, where you might find it, and why you should avoid it, especially when making purchasing decisions for your department. Um, PFAS, or per- and polyfluorinated alkyl substances, are entirely man-made. Um, these chemicals exist in thousands of different formulations. They can be detected in virtually every corner of the environment, and they remain there for a very long time. Um, PFAS bioaccumulates in organisms at the top of the food chain. Um, so in all likelihood, uh, you have PFAS in your body right now, um, and it will remain there for quite some time. Part of the reason why PFAS is so prevalent in the environment is because it's an extremely effective repellent of both oil and water. Um, so if you've ever bought, for instance, fast food and uh, the burger is extremely greasy, the fries are extremely greasy, um, and you can see the blotches on the bag, uh, but that grease just like isn't coming through the bag or isn't coming through whatever container is holding that food. Um, that's not necessarily because of PFAS. There are uh, all sorts of alternatives that exist and that more and more companies are turning to. Um, but odds are extremely good that if you've consumed fast food, uh, you've consumed PFAS, um, and that is why. 
So where you'll find PFAS is basically any product where grease or water resistance would be a desirable quality. Um, that'll include popcorn bags, couches and carpets, nonstick pans, food wrappers and dishes, firefighting foams, you know, waterproof jackets. Um, and as a result of its prevalence in consumer goods um, and its production, uh, you'll also find it in drinking water. Um, as with most man-made chemicals, the research around the long-term effects of PFAS is ongoing. Um, but the health effects we know can stem from PFAS exposure are delayed puberty, um, higher cholesterol, lowered fertility, um, a reduced response to immunizations, um, and possibly cancer. Um, this is not, you know, uh, a small concern. Um, you really do want to get PFAS to the best of your ability out of your workplace. PFAS um, are in compostable products to make them water and grease proof. Um, so in testing, uh, we often find high levels of fluorine, um, which is indicative of the use of uh, PFAS additives. Um, you'll find that in products including recycled paper, sugarcane waste, wheat straw, silver grass. And part of what makes that so tricky is that while those products themselves may be compostable, um, composting centers often do not accept products um, that look like PFAS have been um, included as additives. Um, often there will be like a bit of a sheen, um, like reflective of light. Uh, and if that's the case in those products, um, they just won't accept it, which makes those products functionally non-compostable. New York State's procurement guidance on food service containers and wrappers prefers reusable food service containers first. So whenever possible, um, they, they hope um, that you'll be using things like ceramic products, um, metal products, and so on. In the event that you can't do that, if you're hosting, for instance, um, a really big event, uh, with, with, and, and you, this isn't something you do often, um, you would then ideally use um, single-use containers and wrappers that are compostable. Um, in a commercial or municipal facility. Um, failing that, uh, they should be easily recyclable. And failing that, made with a minimum percentage of post-consumer recycled content or sustainably harvested content. Um, products that are covered um, should not contain PFAS chemicals or polystyrene. So reusable options, um, these are things that hopefully you're already using in your workplace. You're almost certainly using them in your home. Uh, it would include ceramic plates, bowls and mugs, um, glass beverage ware, stainless steel utensils, travel mugs. Um, these are really the best option. Now, it, it's not always um, the case that you're going to be able to use reusables, um, but whenever you can, um, I would hope that you would endeavor to do so. In the event that you do have to use single-use foodware, um, ideally then you would be using compostable foodware. Um, that could include bamboo products, uh, clay-coated paper or paperboard, um, or uncoated paper. Uncoated paper typically does not test as having any fluorine, um, but when it does, it's often very little. Um, so these are your best options uh, if, if reusables are not on the table for you. So in the event that you can't use compostable foodware options, uh, you would then try to have the optimal recyclable solutions. Um, in most communities, number one PET plastic will be accepted. That's about 65% of communities. Um, number five polypropylene uh, is accepted in about 61%. Um, and this is a little bit old, so those numbers could be different now. Um, paper coffee sleeves as well are accepted in most communities. Uh, what's not recyclable 
is, of course, um, foodware that's contaminated with food uh, beyond the beyond the point of salvageability. So napkins, for instance, uh, you're not going to be able to recycle those. Um, most plates, bowls, or takeout containers, if they're just you know, if they're not cleaned off, um, that cannot be accepted. Uh, if an item is too small to, sh to sort, so for instance, um, plastic straws, of course, there's been some legislation around, uh, but maybe lesser known is that cutlery cannot be sorted in recycling facilities and portion cups can't either. Um, and a lot of paper products um, that have non-recyclable liner, um, that cannot be accepted either. Beyond the very basic consideration of whether your single-use foodware is even disposable or compostable in your um, local facilities, um, there are some other things that you want to keep in mind. Um, you want, if you are using paper or wood products, um, to make sure that they are sustainably sourced. Uh, one way to do that is to look for the Forest Stewardship Council's certification on the product. Um, you want to make sure that these products have chlorine-free free bleaching um, or that they're using, using water-based inks and glues. Um, and you ideally want to be using feedstock and final products that are produced in North America. Um, because that means that it's not being shipped all around the world, you know, using fossil fuels or um, other energy intensive modes of transportation. Why should you avoid polystyrene in your single use foodware um, is a good question because it's definitely cheap and it's definitely pre prevalent. Um, it's reasonably anticipated to be a human carcinogen. Um, it's often not consumed in the way that it's intended, as in it, um, people often heat up uh, food in their polystyrene containers in the microwave, um, which is much more dangerous. But even when consumed as intended, um, there are adverse health effects. Um, it's also slow to degrade. Um, so it, it, once it goes in the landfill, it stays there uh, and it can occupy a lot of space. Um, and it's not recyclable um, in any facility in New York State. One tool that I like to use when judging the relative chemical footprints of plastics is Clean Productions Actions Plastic Scorecard. Um, it gives you a sense of how benign a plastic is and how intensive the process for producing it is. Um, so if you look here, for instance, polylactic acids are, this is fairly benign um, and not too intensive to produce, whereas polyvinyl chloride, for instance, is quite hazardous um, and takes a lot of energy to produce. Um, polystyrene as well, um, very hazardous. Um, <laughs> and it does take a lot of energy. It's not easy to determine the best purchasing options for your needs. Uh, we just spent about 12 minutes on PFAS and foodware, and that's just one type of thing you might have to purchase, right? Um, it would be a very large burden to place on purchasing officers um, to expect that they research each individual type of product they might use in their workplaces, uh, their most sustainable and hazardous options, um, make a decision, and so on. Um, luckily, the Office of General Services in New York makes this easier on us by offering the Green NY portal. Um, through this, all government bodies and eligible nonprofits can purchase at state negotiated rates products that reduce or eliminate the health and environmental risks from the use or release of toxic substances, um, minimize the risks of the discharge of pollutants into the environment, minimizes the risks and volume and toxicity of its packaging, um, maximizes the use of recycled content and sustainably managed renewable resources, and provides other environmental or health benefits. There are three types of contracts covered in the OGS centralized contracts in Green NY. These are commodities, um, services, and technology. 
The state central procurement office is responsible for establishing and managing centralized contracts for goods and services needed by authorized users across New York State. Um, it manages approximately 1,500 contracts worth $4.5 billion per year. Um, so effectively, they oversee the seventh largest economy in the world. Um, what that means for you is that if they are negotiating uh, prices on behalf of the seventh largest economy in the world, uh, those prices are, of course, going to be better uh, because they're in bulk um, relative to you as an independent nonprofit or a small municipal office um, purchasing for yourself. You can use the portal if you're any of the following. If you're a state agency, of course, you can use the portal, um, but also local governments, um, school districts, even private schools, universities or colleges, um, charitable nonprofit organizations can use it, public authorities, and public benefit corporations. Why should you use OGS's centralized contracts? Well, it saves time. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of time doing research yourself, um, which has a lot of pitfalls, uh, especially for people who maybe are new to trying to purchase sustainably. Um, companies will often have dubious certifications um, or they might make claims about their products that are either unverifiable or extremely difficult to verify. Um, and OGS cuts through the noise for you. You don't have to spend a lot of time comparing offers either, uh, so you don't have to go to Target or Walmart or Staples or what have you, uh, trying to determine the best cost. Um, so it saves you money. Um, and in addition to that, um, because these contracts uh, are negotiated by the state, um, you aren't going to be paying sticker price the way that you would if you were just going to a Target and you know buying it off the shelf. And it's fairly easy. Um, this is this is not a very challenging process uh, once you have the basics. You can find OGS decentralized contracts by going to the procurement services website. That's www.nyspro.ogs.ny.gov. Um, you're going to click Find Contracts, click either Commodity, Service, or Technology Contracts, depending on what you're looking for, um, and the page will then display an alphabetical list of contract groups. In order to use the OGS's centralized contracts, you need to obtain an OGS customer number, um, so you're going to want to click on Information for Buyers. Uh, you view the contracts on the website, follow the procurement instructions for the contract, um, and then if you run into any snags, uh, you can contact either the contract manager um, or the customer services office at 518-474-6717 or customer.services at ogs.ny.gov. Um, both are available here on the slide. The OGS offers um, approved EO4 specifications for each type of product that they sell. So for instance, we were talking about single-use food containers earlier. Um, they have product specs um, that, that they're looking for when they list those products on their website. Um, and th the goal is always to have the most sustainable options. Uh, these are all available online um, if you want to get a better sense of what those specifications are. The sorts of things you might purchase um, sustainably through New York's OGS um, contracts ranges quite a lot. Um, so you can get, you know, of course, copy paper, janitorial paper, green cleaning products, but this also includes things like computers and printers, uh, zero emissions vehicles, um, solar panels, uh, in terms of services, you can get composting. So it really runs the gamut. And uh, I would encourage you to spend a little while to see just how broad <laughs> the range of available products and services really is.
cleaning products are especially dicey terrain um, when you're trying to make sustainable purchasing decisions in part because there is so much greenwashing around them. Um, people will make a lot of really dubious claims about the safety of their products. Um, and uh, it, it, it really is good if you can have a sort of guide through this um, that is sensible and uh, maybe ar arrived at by professionals. Um, this is one area where I would especially encourage you to investigate OGS's options. Um, and the sorts of cleaning products that they provide uh, very wildly. Uh, you can get general purpose cleaners, uh, floor mains, chemicals, um, microfiber cleaning services, janitorial paper products, um, and so on. Basically any of your cleaning needs can be satisfied through products uh, included in OGS's centralized contracts. So thank you for joining us. Um, my name again is Greg Campbell Cohen. Uh, you can find me at greg at cleanhealthyny.org. Uh, if you have any questions or any feedback, you can also send us a message on Facebook or Twitter um, at cleanhealthyny. Uh, the resources that we were talking about earlier are provided again on the right hand side of the screen. Um, and I hope you got something out of this. Uh, <laughs> let me know if, uh, if you have any questions at all. Okay.